Okay, so I'm going for a slightly different style episode today. I'm going to actually give you a world tour of my world underground so far in this underground only challenge. And the reason for that is because I want to show you guys what the world for me is like at the moment. And then I would like to do another world tour at like, say, episode, uh, I don't know, maybe 100? Is that is that too ambitious? Yeah, let's say episode 100. And I would like to see how the world has changed in that time so for me to do that I wanted to have an early world tour in this series right I wanted to have a world tour that's quite early on in this series so we'll be able to see a lot of the changes that uh, are made over the coming what like 90 episodes I guess that's if I commit to doing that longer than the series that is a huge series but I do have a lot of plans for this world now I would have actually given you a world tour on day one except for the only thing is all I had on day one was this little tiny cave area which spanned from it was just a little staircase I didn't actually have well I did actually put the stair blocks in I put the stair blocks in and I just had like this little area around here I think maybe it went to did it go back to here it went back to here you can actually see where the original room was to here, I believe, to that wall, to there, to that wall, over there, and to there. So that was the space we were dealing with in this stair. So we had this one room and this staircase, this staircase that leads all the way up to the surface, which I can actually go on at the moment because it's every 10 days and I've actually waited more than 10 days, but that's not the point. I will show you the world. So come down here, this is the staircase from the top of the world and it comes down to our cave, our world at the bottom here. And what you can see already is that the, uh, the storage system has gotten a little bit out of hand. So I've just got a bunch of stuff. There's all my picks that most of you have seen if you've watched the episode in my diamond collection, which we've now getting on for like three stacks of diamonds. And that's just from mining, out, uh, from living in the underground. You just seem to naturally uh, accumulate them. And we have more just random stuff that I've just accumulated through this series. A lot of cobbled deep save because I showed you the statistics last time and it was... What was it? Tens of thousands. And yeah, these these are all empty chests, but they will be, uh, they're just there ready to welcome new blocks, which I, I am going to get because there's always more space I need to, to carve out. So let's, let's talk you through it. So yeah, we have this original main room, which was basically like the headquarters of my base. And it still is the headquarters of my base for the time being. Now in the future, this will not be, it will just be where my like starter, I would just call it the starter space, I guess. Like I'll actually make a, a bigger base somewhere probably somewhere else but this this is where it all started over here is our village breeder now we have a ton of beds in here and a load of villagers and i just feed them bread regularly to, to breed them up as you can see there's quite a few empty spaces which means our population can still grow this is for feeding the trade hall the trade hall which is going to make us a lot of money and a, give us make us very item rich in a lot of the equipment and items we need especially blocks like I'm thinking of masons particularly I'm really looking forward to getting because we're gonna be able to get a lot of cool blocks especially quartz blocks I'd like to build with quartz blocks and being able to do that is and this this place over here is essential for feeding that trade hall because we have a lot of villagers still to get talking of the trade hall here it is so this originally was only a small place this was the original trade hall building this one here and it didn't look quite like this. It was just made out of cobbled deep slate because I just carved it out of the... Well, it was just out of deep slate, actually. Just out of deep slate from the cave itself. All, all of this wasn't uh, wasn't there. It, or it was there, but it was just in the form of just a cave. Actually, no, it wasn't even a cave. It was just deep slate. That's all it was because I carved this room out, this entire space. So this was the original one and it had like six spaces for villagers. So it would have cut off here and then... Over the, over the series, I've expanded it to fit more in. And as you can see, we've just got Fletcher after Fletcher after Fletcher. These, uh, this trade hall can actually fit 60 villagers in, 30 a pop, 30 a side. So that's 60 in total. I believe it's... Um, I believe it's 30. Yeah, it's definitely 30 on each side. So that's 60. And we have another one, two, three... Or five buildings to fill. There's another 300 villagers I've still got to, <laughs> I've still got to fill, but they're all empty at the moment. These are just ready in preparation for when uh, when we get the villagers, which is why that breeder over there is so important. And as you can see, I've actually labelled them. So we have librarians for this one. That's going to be giving getting all our enchantments. And because there's 60 spaces, we should be able to get every enchantment we need. Then there's this, the Fletchers, which you can have. Uh, we're going to have. Fletchers again, but two of them are going to be farmers just for golden carrots. 
Although I should have enough with just the uh, the two farmers there to get enough golden carrots for what I need for feeding myself. But yeah, these are all going to be Fletchers as well because that's our biggest money making method at the moment, trading string for our string duper, which we'll get to. This one is going to be for Masons. So all of them, they're all going to be uh, fitted with Masons. And again, I believe this building here is also going to be, yep, another one fitted with Masons. So we're going to have a lot of Masons, which is going to have a, we're going to be able to, uh, let me see, if it's 60 per, per building, we're going to be able to get 120 Masons. So that's going to be great for getting a lot of blocks. Clerics for this last one. This is mainly going to be for buying redstone. Just uh, for in the future, when we do need a lot of redstone, I believe the guys in here is going to, uh, is going to be able to feed our redstone needs now that is something i do want to learn how to do in this series more often is redstone like there's two of the things i'm trying to do is get better at building which is why this uh this trade hall isn't just square blocks which is what i would normally have done it's actually i've tried to make it look a little bit more decorative which for a lot of people it doesn't look that great but for me this, this is above and beyond and that's one of the things i want to do another one of the things is get better at redstone over here we've actually got our collection system for our string duper as you can see i've got a ton of string at the moment large chest after large chest after large chest and hoppers full of it like if i was to uh, look how quickly it fills up with string now i could someone did say i should get like a lava pit at the end to continue continually see burn like string that's overfilled but i don't really need to because i do actually have a lever on our string duper so if you follow me this way i say carve this out i carved this off from the main room and then made this staircase and up here should be here it is our string duper look at it yeah there is some string up there but it doesn't really matter because look how much is going down there it all just gets funneled down there originally it did just stop here and I funneled it into the chests here but I made a mess of it and it wasn't funneling very well there was string getting caught along this section so I thought you know what what I would do I would extend the water this way let it go like the full eight blocks and then just have one stream down here this stream then goes down into here into this deep dark biome which was a pain to mine out because we had the warden because there was a screamer or screecher or whatever it is and I had to break it because it, it kept spawning in the warden which was annoying but yeah that gets funneled down there and at the bottom there is where the hoppers are now <laughs> the hoppers are completely filled so they're getting built up but the great thing is we do have a lever I was going to hit that I don't want to hit that I can just do that ish bash bosh hit the lever and the string has stopped now I was going to break this string accidentally I don't want to do that because the duper would stop working but yeah if I click it again it should come on there we go, look at that, and it starts working again. Now, I would like to decorate this room at some point, but that's for another time. Maybe in these next 90 episodes until the next world tour, we'll do it. Ah, as you can see, I've got this uh, little infinity pool down there, and I also got an infinity pool down there. It's just because getting water is, I mean, it's not too difficult because we have large caves, and large caves often do have water coming down. So that's where we got our two buckets of water, and I was made, able to make this infinity pool, and then just in case if one of them, I don't know, glitched out or something, somehow I ended up taking the water from this, even though it is an infinity pool. I had another one spare on hand. So now if we go this way, we should, ah, actually one more thing. You might have noticed I have this little room above the trade, or the, above the village breeder. It's simply because I, uh, oh, hang on, there's someone at the door. This was originally intended for spawning iron golems, believe it or not, because I thought, you know what, if I'm going to have a village breeder down here, I figured actually above this would be great for spawning iron golems. Now, I may have made the uh, ceiling slightly too high for that. Maybe if I just made it three blocks high instead of four blocks, it would have been spawning better. But it doesn't really matter because this is spawning. And I still need to make a proper iron farm. But when I do need iron and I can't be bothered to mine any from the uh, from the underground, I just kill these guys in here. Quite simple. All I do is I hit them, lead them over to here, where I manually dispatch them right with my sword or something. And then they can't get to me as long as I stand far enough away. But yeah, that's... That's where we are for our iron needs at the moment. Now, if we head this way, there's this long staircase up here, and it leads us to our to the main cave we found, the large cave we found. And as you can see, we have a lot of trees in here. I actually got these uh, these trees from the surface, got a few saplings, and then I was able to grow trees down here and picked up some dirt, grow them now in the uh, two by two formation because we can get the giant spruces, and that means we can get a shit ton of logs with ever, without ever having to go to the surface because there is a restriction on the surface being that, hey, look, there's some diamonds there. I keep meaning to pick these up and I just keep forgetting. Mostly because they're not a priority, which is weird to say, but being in an underground world, we're going to come across a lot of 
diamonds. So it doesn't really bother me that we haven't picked them up. We can come here anytime and pick them up. But we also have what I also like is our pool of lava over here where I can just grab lava where I need it. Or I could just turn it all into obsidian and I'll be able to mine obsidian for the future. So I'm not worried about ever running out of lava for obsidian, anything like that, because we have a lot right here. Now I still haven't, as you can see, there's still a lot of the cave I haven't explored. There is a mine shaft up there, which I haven't gone exploring. But yeah, there, this cave is huge. It is a massive cave. Like I've lit a lot of it up, as you can see, and I've made it safe because I wanted to grow the trees in here for planting. But as you can see, there's still a lot of dark plant patches and there's still mobs. So there's a skeleton up there and I saw a spider a minute ago and a creeper hanging out but yeah as you can see it goes way up and I'd like to do something with this place at some point I really like to turn it into somewhere cool but oh, I almost looked at that enderman up there but yeah there is uh, it is huge it really goes the, the zombie up there it is it's gigantic not only that it also goes back over there and up there and yeah this it's a really big place I still haven't haven't explored to the full extent of is that diamond? Oh, it was single diamonds yeah, I haven't fu fully explored it uh, this is our portal to the nether. It's not the it's not the most interesting of portals, but I wanted to do something, at least make it a bit more decorative than what I normally do. What I normally do is I just have a portal, but I thought, you know what, I'd make, make the effort. Like I said, I'm trying to be more decorative, and I say that every episode, so people are probably getting sick. If we go through, there is uh, nothing particularly exciting. <laughs> it's just a warped wood farm. Well, I mean, it's fairly exciting, right? It's, it's a warped, warped wood farm, warped forest, whatever you want to call it. But I haven't actually done anything to this area at the moment. I haven't got like a nether road or anything. But I have got, if we come this way, because I would like to set up a nether road. Uh, which way is it? Maybe it's, I think it's this way. I think it's this way. Don't quote me. No, on second thought, I think it's the other way. You know what? I don't actually know. But somewhere around here, there is a nether fortress, which is fairly close to this portal. If I knew which direction it was. But it doesn't really matter. That is something I'm going to have to... Uh, build a road to and I do want to make this place a lot safer fuck did I look at him no, I thought I looked at him and I would like to actually set up because you can build these automatic farms for the uh, warped wood or warped trees right so I'd like to do something like that in the uh, in our cave somewhere maybe in our large cave or maybe I'll just mine out another section but yeah there's not too much to it at the moment we're only 10 episodes in but that's where we're up to at the moment oh one more thing I, I forgot to show you. We did it last episode, so it'd be fresh in a lot of people's minds. But if we come through the cave this way, da -da -da, here we have our nether wart farm. It's a pretty big area. Now, this place took a lot of work. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but I had to mine out this entire space, and it took a shit ton of work. We got over a stack of diamonds for it, though, so that's something. But as you can see, it's connected to the rest of the cave, which goes that way, and that comes out near the trees which you can sort of see in the background there but yeah I'm still probably going to add in a few more rows of nether wall because at the moment I've got five rows each uh, 64 blocks long that's a stack each so I have 10 stacks worth of soul sand was needed so nothing too crazy but I'd like to have maybe another few rows a couple rows here and then maybe a couple rows on the other side so that would take our total up to like nine rows or something like that and I found out last episode I can actually compost this stuff which is great so that might be a a way for us to get easy bone meal but that's that's about it for this world tour i know it's a short episode but i wanted to give one of these episodes uh these world tours i wanted to start doing these world tours and then every say 100 episodes i can give another world tour just having a look at the world and what we've done in it so that's why i wanted to get get one out early and i think 10 episodes in we've done enough to give like a small world tour and i'm i'm looking forward to seeing where the next one is all right